اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علام اللہ نبی آباد سیدنا و نبینا و حبیبنا و مولانا محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم و علی آلہ و اصحابہ و من اتبع بهداه الى يوم الدين فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهادي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وشار الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي رب لا تؤاخذني مما يقولون واغفر لي ما لا يعلمون واجعلني خيرا مما يظنون اما بعد ما دي برادرز ان سيسس ان اسلام Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to the House of Dua. And welcome to our continuing conversation on parables from the Quran. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, today we are bringing you a very beautiful parable. Parable that will teach you lessons about your life in this world and your life in the akhirah. Parable that will make you live good life here and at the same time be sure by the mercy of Allah that you'll be among those who will be entered Jannah on the day of accountability. Parable that will make you a great personality in the world that we live today. That's the parable we are bringing to you today. And that parable comes from Surah Ibrahim, which is chapter 14 of the Holy Quran, verses 24 to 27. In these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares, Bada uzubillahi minan shaitani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Alem tara kifa dharaballahu mathalan kalimetan twa ibetan kasajaratin twa ibetin. Asluha thabitun, ufariunha fi sama. Tuti ukulaha kulahini bizni rabbiha. Woyadaribu la uli amutala linna sinla lohun yatazakarun. Wamathalun kalimetin khabithetin kashajaratin khabithetin yujutu setin min fawkini arat. Malaha minkara. Yuthabitu la ulazina manu. Bilikawli thabit fili ayati dunia. Wa fili akira. Wa yudulun la uzwalimina. Wa yafwalun la umayyasha. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Don't you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set forth a parable? Parable of the pure word. Parable of the good word. Parable by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares goodness with that which is not good. In this parable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Holy Prophet Muhammad, here is a word, a good word, a perfect word. It is like a good tree. A good tree that grows so well, firmly rooted on the ground. And because it has its root firmly on the ground, the branches spread out to the sky so well, and they produce good fruits. Compare that one to the parable of a bad word, an evil word, a dirty word. It's like a tree, a bad tree. That tree grows not firmly rooted on the ground. As a matter of fact, its root is at the surface of the earth. And because of that, it's unable to grow some good branches and it's unable to produce. It's unable to stay stable on the earth. The meaning of this parable is so deep. The word Allah is talking about is the word by which you sabi to la ulazina manu bilkawli thabiti fili ayati dunia wa fili akhira. By the word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes those who believe firm, make their heart firm, make their stay on this planet firm, make their return to the akhira firm, make their entry jana also firm. Both this word and the akhira, 
they're going to stand firm. But on the other hand, those who do wrong into this world, what you do, on Allah's banner, what Allah will cause them to go astray and will cause them to suffer in this world in the Akira. Of course, Allah does whatever He wants to do in His power. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, before we go into the details of the meaning of this parable, I want to warn you. I want to warn you most sincerely to be careful of the kind of words or words or sentences or statements that come from your mouth. This is very critical in the world we live today because many of us are struggling, not knowing why we are struggling. Many of us are doing very well in life, but still very, very unhappy, not knowing why. Largely because of the abuse of our mouth. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I warn you as I warn myself to be careful with what we say with our mouth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kulun kaula sedida, yusli lakun ama lakun, waya fri lakun zonu bakun, waman yuti la wa resula, fakarifa aza fauzan azima. Whenever you want to say something, say something that is good. Said it. Honorable respectable, truthful, upholding what Allah has commanded and staying away from what Allah has prohibited, staying by the truth, following the example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. If you do so, Allah will purify your deeds and forgive you and make you candidate for Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra, it says, Tell my slaves, Ya Muhammad, Whenever they want to speak, let them speak that which is good. My dear brothers and sisters, Islam, take a record of yourself, take a measure, take a scale of yourself, of words that come out of your mouth. In your relationship with Allah, for example, what are words that come out of your mouth? Do you read the Quran regularly? Do you do the azkar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regularly? Tahalil, tahami, takbir, and tasbih. Do you make use of them? La ilaha illa la ilaha illa la ilaha illa Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Subhanallah 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 Alhamdulillah 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 How often do you recite all this do they come out of your mouth from time to time my dear brothers and sisters Islam what about istighfar astaghfirullah astaghfirullah Astaghfirullah. Do they come out of your mouth every time? These are the deeds that you mention. They go into the air. Even though nobody hears it. And even though people hear it. Still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records them for you. In your records of good deeds. They will make a difference in your life today. And they will make a difference in your life when you meet Allah on the day of accountability. Do you moisturize your tongue with this as car of Allah from time to time? How often do you read the Quran? What do you say with your mouth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't just give you this mouth for nothing. What do you do with it? Talking trash? Finding fault with the creation? Let's step forward to the relationship between you and fellow human beings. How do you use your mouth? Are you the type of person whose mouth is toxic and poisonous? Who use your mouth to harm people in front of them or behind them? Who use your mouth to ridicule people and point out the faults in other people without taking a look at yourself first? What kind of person are you? Are you the one who speak words that invite people to you, that make people love you, that make people think that you are harmless, that make people think that you are a person of truth, that make people think that you are a righteous person? Is that the way you use your mouth? What about your relationship with other creatures of Allah that exist on this planet? Are you the one who uses your mouth to criticize them all the time, finding fault in what Allah has created, instead of finding goodness in it? Are you the one who is so critical of the commandment of Allah with your words, not wanting to follow the truth? How do you rate yourself in terms of the words that come out of your mouth? You know what? Words have led nations into war. Bad words have led marriages into total collapse. Bad words have led to the destruction between children and their parents' relationship. Bad words have led to the loss of precious jobs that some of us have had in the past because we make bad use of our mouth. 
you will be judged by the statement that you issue from your mouth in this world and in the Akira. This is the truth about it. As I said, many of us are doing so well in life, but there's no happiness. There's no good sleep. Why? Because of statements that come from your mouth. And many of us, similarly, we find their journey through the grave and to Akira to be tormentous, to be difficult, to be hazardous because of the way we use our mouth. That's why it's important for us to pay attention to the parable we are bringing to you today, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah, by this parable, is warning us of the best way to use our mouth. It's warning us that the words that come out of our mouth mean a lot to us. And this is why we cherish this parable and bringing it to you today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The good word is like a good tree that grows firmly rooted, produce good branches, and produce good fruits for the one who plants it. Of course, that tree lives so well to the extent that the person is able to benefit from it in this world, we also benefit from the Akira. But on the other hand, a bad word, an evil word, is like a tree that does not grow well. No root on the ground, and so could not produce good branches, and could not produce good fruits, as a result of which the planter went away without good yield. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, by his word. What is that word? Ibn Abbas, the Allah Anhuma, narrated hadith in which he said, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam says, that word is the word of the believer, the word, the kalima of Allah, known as what? La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. That kalima of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ilaha illallah, Represent the believer is the statement the believer believes in, acts upon, by which his deeds are carried out. As a result of that, those deeds live with him like a tree that has produced good fruits in the world we live in. And when he dies, the same world will go to him into the grave and from there to the Akira, by which he will gain Jannah. What word is that? La ilaha illallah. How many times a day do you utter that word, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam? How do you expect your life in this world to be prosperous? How do you expect yourself to enjoy your prosperity if you are devoid of la ilaha illallah? If you don't believe in the kalima of Allah? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ibn Abbas, the day along, Anhum has stated that on the other hand, the bad word, the ugly word, the evil word represents disbelief. And what the disbeliever does? Disbelief will not succeed in this world, will not succeed in the Akira. It's like a tree that is on top of the ground. No branches, no good fruits. That's what it is. We need to understand this, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this word, la ilaha illallah, will be our savior in this world, will be our savior in the Akhirah. How? In the hadith narrated by Al-Barabin Azib, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam says, Al-Muslim is as well as Kabul, shahid la ilaha illallah, wa anna muhammad abduhun wa rasulun, Zalika kaluhu yusabitu lau lazina amano bil kauli sabiti fri ayati dunia wafili akhira. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Ali Osana says when the person dies and inside the grave when he is being questioned, that person is able to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. That in fact is the statement by which Allah says he will keep the believer firm in this world as well as in the akhira. That is the statement by which you're going to enter Jannah. The same al baribin as Brother Allah Anu narrated a very long hadith reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. Similar hadith were narrated by Abu Huraira, Brother Allah Anu, and Anasbi Malik, Brother Allah Anu, which were reported in Abu Daud and Ibn Majah, Rahmatullah alayhima. al baribin as Brother Allah Anu narrated that one day they accompanied the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala alayhi wa sallam to a funeral service. And when they got there, the grave was still being prepared, so they sat down and they were waiting. Something happened. The prophet looked at the sky and told them immediately, Aizu billahi mi azabun kabr. 
seek refuge in Allah against the punishment in the grave. Then he began to narrate to them that when a man, a good believer, dies or is about to die in the life we live now, angels of Allah will come from heaven. Beautiful angels wearing white dress, scenting good, advanced party before the angel Azrael comes. This advanced party will come to the person who is dying to pacify him. They will stay a little bit far away from him. Then the angel of death finally comes. Azrael alayhi salam. He will greet the dying person. Assalamu alaikum. And we order the soul come out of the body. The soul will flow out of the body in obedience, like the last drop of water from an empty vessel. The angel of death will take the soul. As soon as that soul is taken, all the other angels that were waiting will be competing for that soul. They will grab the soul and wrap it up with a shroud, a white shroud that they brought from Jannah, accompanied with a very big scent that you cannot imagine in the world we live now. They will compete with the soul and wrap it up in that white shroud and move to the heaven. As they are traveling through the sky, every angel they come across, we ask them, who is that person? They will describe the person in the most beautiful language, beautiful accolades, until they get to the lower heaven. They will knock. They will open the heaven. Who is that? Say, it's so, so, and so. They will let him pass until he get to the upper heaven, the seventh heaven. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizing the soul of the believer, will say, this is my true slave. Go and record his deeds in the record known as Iliyin. In Nakita Bali Avura Arin Lafi Iliyin. O Mandera Kama Iliyon. Kitabun Marakun. Yashadu Holomu Karabun. At last one of Allah will order that the records of this person be kept in the Iliyin. He will order that the person be returned back to the earth. That it is from the earth, the person was created, is from the earth, he will be resurrected as well on the day of accountability. The soul will be returned to the body. Thereafter, two angels will come, Munkar Wanake, to question the dead person. This will happen the first day or second day after the burial of the person. And the angels, Munkar Wanake, dressed in a very honorable way, will ask the person, Marabuk, Omadinuk. Who is your Lord? What is your deen? And who is your prophet? The person will reply, Allah will be. What is Lami Dini? What Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be? The person will reply that Allah is his Lord. Allah is his deen. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his prophet. Then they will ask him, how did you know that? He will say, I read the Quran. I found the message in the Quran. That is the prophet. I believe in him. And they will ask him, rest. Allah will order another angel from the sky that that person be allowed to see the Jannah that he is going to. The door of the Jannah will be opened. Clothes from the Jannah will be brought to that person. And the scent of Jannah will be reaching that person. Another honorable angel that looks like a human being will appear. He will look so handsome. The dead person will recognize and say, you look so handsome. What can I do for you? Who are you, by the way? Then he will introduce himself to the dead person as what? I am your deeds that you used to do in life. I am your words that you used to alter in life. I am your kalima. La ilaha illallah. That person will, will give this good news that on the day of accountability, you are going to Jannah. Then the dead person will say, I need it now. I need it now. I need it now. And he will be told, relax. You will not be there until the day of accountability. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the narration by Al-Bara bin Azibredi Allah and from the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. On the other hand, when an evil person, a person who disbelieved, who did not know Kalima dies, similarly, Advanced angels will come from the sky. Ferocious beings, they will come along with a thick cloth that looks like a thick blanket to the dead person. They will surround him until Azrael alayhi salam will come. As soon as uh, the angel of death, Azrael alayhi salam, comes, he will order the soul, come out of the body. The soul will be confused, wouldn't know what to do. The soul will scatter around the body of the person who had died. 
the Azariah we use force to pull the soul away from the body of the person, just as you use a hook to tear the mouth of a fish. And then those angels will be competing for the soul. They will grab it, wrap it in that thick blanket, and a very terrible odor will be oozing from it, and then they will ascend heaven. As they are traveling, every angel that they pass will ask, who is this? They will describe the person in the worst language. They say, that's that person who did not follow the way of fire. As soon as they get to the lower heaven, guess what? They will ask for permission to be open. They will be told, no, he will not ascend heaven. Take him back to the earth. He will not ascend heaven. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in the Quran in Surah Al-Araf, La tufata ullahu abu wa abu samaha wa la yadakuluna in janna hata yali jan jamalun fi samin fiyat They will not enter janna. Those people who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the gate of heaven will not be open for them and they will not enter janna until the camel passes through the eye of a needle. And you know how difficult it is for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. And immediately the soul will be released to crash back to the earth where it will scatter around and be reunited with the body. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hajj, Woman yushiriki bin la faka nama kharramina sama fata atafun terun out hawe bihire ome makani seko. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever associates partnership with Allah and dies without disbelief, that person is like somebody who has fallen from high up there in the sky and landed on the ground with the body scattered around while birds of the air are feeding on it or the wind carrying it from one area to another. That's how we reward those who are sinners. And they brought us in Islam again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we order that the soul be returned back to the grave to join the body and the soul will come down. And then the angels of questioning will come, Munkar wanna kill. This time in a very ferocious manner. Not ready to tolerate nonsense. They will ask him, Ma Rebuka or Ma Dinuka or Mandepiuka. Guess what? When they ask him, Who is your Lord? What is your Deen? And who is your prophet? He will reply, I don't know. I don't know. They will ask him, What do you know about Muhammad? Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He will claim not to know. He will explain. How they used to follow people in what they do and say what they say. I don't know much about Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Ask Tefullah. May Allah not allow us to find ourselves in that situation. Then when that happens, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, he will be asked to remain there in suffering. The grave will begin to tighten up on it. Then comes a very ugly person who will meet him in that grave. He will be so scared, he will ask the person, who are you? Say, I'm your deeds. I'm those things you used to do not fearing the word of Allah, not believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created you. He's the one to whom you shall return for accountability. I am the one. He will remain in that perpetual state, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. And they will tell him, you will be in this condition until the day of accountability. This is the beginning of the life in Barzakh, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. And when he is told, he will say, I don't want to see the day of accountability. I wish it will not come. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I'm here to remind you, I remind myself, therefore, that from time to time, we need to choose the kind of words that come from our mouth. Make use of your mouth in celebrating Allah. Do not allow the kalima to dry away from your mouth. This is the word that will save you in this world and save you in the Akhirah. Many of us spend our time talking politics here and there, using our mouth to ridicule people, to despise people. And we consider it to be just pleasure. But it will turn out into a Big harm for you in this world and in the Akhirah. If you don't want that one to happen, then make sure that you make the best use of your mouth. You speak those words that are good. Make sure in your relationship with Allah, you engage in salawat, where you will always be bowing and rising with Allah Akbar. Make sure you do the azkar of Allah. Tahalil, tahamid, tasbih, and takbir. Make sure there are many in your mouth. Make sure in your relationship with other people, you are one that people will love because of the words that come from your mouth. Not one that people will be scared of because of the words that come from your mouth. And your relationship with other creatures of Allah, when you see any part of his creation, give glory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what you say today will be of benefit to us today, will also be of benefit to us in the Akira if they are good words.
But if they are bad words, if they will harm us today, they will harm us in the after. So be careful over what you say with your mouth.